spooks, specters, and the Steam Next Fest are all ready to pumpkin spice up your October and scare you into playing some of the best upcoming games you probably didn't know existed. Leading the way is a controlled Auto 9 blast from the past with Robocop Rogue City. Take to the streets of that classic near-future dystopia not that inaccurate depiction of Detroit as the long, cybernetic arm of the law of Robocop. In this all-new original story, you'll dive into the reality of being a futuristic police cyborg that people don't really trust because you're kind of fucked up from that part where you're the vestiges of a human trapped in a robotic body. But don't let that slow you down as you take on tasks like taking complaints at the front desk of the police station or hauling a drunk dude down to one of the handful of jail cells. Of course, you don't need many jail cells when you murder your way through countless stereotypical 80s bad guys who think they'll be the one to fire the 300th bullet that breaks through that armored chest. When you've finished methodically stomping your way through the eviscerated bodies of your enemies, you can finally get back to the real police work of just talking to people until you find a good enough reason to arrest them. In an effort to fully embrace every 80s action movie, we'll move on to another robotic franchise with Terminator Dark Fate Defiance. If you're a real fan of real-time strategies where the perspective is from geosynchronous orbit and everyone looks like ants, you'll love squinting at this familiar war against the machines. In the post-apocalyptic battle of near-future survival, you'll be engaged in extreme tactical warfare where every unit has a variety of limited ammo and vehicles can take part-specific damage and must be crewed by actual drivers. Now you can garrison buildings, manage the logistics of a dwindling army, and try to survive your inevitable extinctions. There's nothing quite as fun as taking on endless waves of robotic assholes, even when you can only control 20% of the units on the map. But if you want a little more control in your robotic war, you might want to try out Go Mecha Ball. This rolling gun isometric roguelike will have you blazing around these glorified pinball boards, smashing into enemies Sonic style while brandishing a collection of brutal weapons. Every level will have you upgrading your balls, various powers, and adding abilities so you can better bounce around levels impregnating your foes with bullets. Just try not to get killed by this giant ant boss or you'll be right back at the beginning bopping this prize machine to unlock new guns and powers. Guns and powers are pretty much the only discernible part of this upcoming card-based real-time strategy called Overload. After putting together a colorful squad of random people, you'll drop them off onto a planet's surface to fend off waves of crunchy-looking royalty-free zerg monsters that wander over to kill them. Your task is to survive using a bunch of color-coordinated cards casting cool killer attacks from their respective generic unit or this familiar orbiting dropship. Each success will take you further into this roguelike web of things to do until you get to the other side of the place you're trying to go with a deck full of deadly playing cards. You can't have indie games without more deck-building mechanics though, which is the core of Blackbird Interactive's new title, Earthless. From the team that brought you strange space adventures like Hard Space Shipbreaker, Homeworld Deserts of Carrick, and in the future Homeworld 3 comes a space-based adventure where you'll be guiding a ship from a dying Earth through a precarious journey to salvation. Like FTL and the more recent but less familiar For the Warp, you'll be adventuring in that forever familiar roguelike journey through event nodes while fighting an oppressive alien force that hated you before you even showed up. You'll engage in turn-based battles that take advantage of an Into the Breach-style precognition of enemy actions so you can dodge their attacks and kick their ass like only a psychic could using a variety of ship abilities on randomly dealt cards. All while admiring this cool retro-futuristic interface that will make you feel right at home if you were born in the 1970s. If you're looking for a bit more style from the 1970s, then American Arcadia might be the game for you. Despite the fact that this game takes place in 2023, everyone looks like they're straight out of Saturday Night Fever on a Monday morning. As you venture into your corporate career and uncover a mystery perpetually on the right side of the screen of this side-scroller, you'll eventually transition to the role of your three-dimensional overlord who is guiding your 2D character's path. From there, you'll have to skulk around this office and acting subterfuge and manipulating the environment from the vantage point of security cameras so your hapless helper isn't captured by militant business police. But if you want to take the fight to those militant business police with the pointy edge of a futuristic sword, you'll want to check out the cyberpunk slasher Ghost Runner 2. The sequel to the game where I died literally a thousand times brings you back into the world of a giant arcology where you jump, swing, and wall run across the least hospitable human-based environment possible, slicing and dicing heavily armed enemies who can kill you in a single hit. But as soon as you think you're getting too comfortable with your well-timed slow-motion dodges and bullet deflections, get ready to get your face smashed in as you jump onto a motorcycle and blaze through a battle toadsian obstacle course conveniently designed for the specific motorbike mayhem. Slicing and dicing is even more integral to the spirit of our next game, Cursor Blade. 
Here you'll take on the role of a knife tethered to your mouse cursor with the grim task of assaulting a wall of weird creatures that will do whatever it takes to survive. You might think you just need to wave your mouse over them at high speed to win, and you're right, but they'll also lash out and damage your blade or even shoot at you with some bullshit. Luckily, you too will unlock some bullshit that will rain down upon them to aid in your simple yet entertaining endeavor. Simplicity has never been more simple when you dive into some classic clicker gameplay with Micro Civilization. This demo will require you to click your way to success by generating food, wood, or whatever resources necessary to spark the fires of humanity and build a world one hut at a time. With enough time and research, you'll be able to build bigger and better buildings to beat back the barriers to your benefits. Soon, however, that simplicity is replaced by a deluge of catastrophic events that can only be staved off by your preparedness and armies and defenses, and success will ensure your tiny civilization continues reaching for the heavens. But when it does fall, your success will be monetized for a currency used to unlock the ability to succeed even harder. But if you want to give your mouse a rest and put a thumbstick to work, you might want to check out the latest bullet heaven set on your favorite mining planet, Deep Rock Galactic Survivor. What may appear to be simply Deep Rock Galactic from a top-down perspective is actually Deep Rock Galactic if it was Vampire Survivors. Now you can enjoy the fun of mining while being yelled at by management without the burden of having to aim your guns or even swing your pickaxe. The future of fun in video games is removing as much interaction as possible but adding as many things happening on screen outside of your control as can be generated by pixels. You'll find all of those familiar minerals and glyphids as well as plenty of drop pods and bosses but without the annoyance of other dwarves to steal your glory. Of course, as we all know, dwarves aren't always the friendliest folks, and in Dungeons 4, you'll have to deal with them breaking into your evil lair and disrupting your hard work hoarding treasure. Within what may be the longest intro in history, you'll be introduced to some characters and gameplay that won't have anything to do with the majority of the demo. Once you've completed this, you'll dive underground and start carving out your subterranean torture dungeon with treasuries, chicken farms, and rooms to store your literal accumulation of evil. But when the dwarves delve too deep and too greedily, you'll be there to cover your tunnels with a thick coating of hilariously deadly traps to maim and obliterate any intruders that be intrudin'. Then you can gather an army to overrun the dwarven encampment and take to the surface where you actually get to control your units rather than just suggesting that they do what you ask them to. If you want a little more consistent control of your units, you can venture into the slightly more realistic world of Last Train Home. This real-time strategy survival game is based on Russian and Czechoslovakian history after the First World War that I know nothing about. What I do know is that this has a train in it and that's pretty damn cool. But when you're not watching your train chug a lug down the Trans-Siberian tracks with its cool armored turrets and military personnel, you'll be venturing into the world on missions to obtain more supplies to maintain your journey and fight that evil red army that hates you for some probably historical reason. You'll need to use every trick to your advantage to keep that train moving and get your soldiers home in time to enjoy all the peace and tranquility that will certainly not be interrupted by a Second World War. Yet, what most people don't know about the Second World War is that all of those tanks were actually driven by a diverse collection of anime babes in Multi-Turret Academy. Here you'll command one of a variety of early armored vehicles in a journey through yet another roguelike tree putting shells in every opposing tank in your way. You may be a slow tanky tank that can absorb enemy fire and take those back shots like a veteran porn star, or you can opt for a faster, more maneuverable tank that can juke those blasts until it gets caught out in the open and is obliterated in a split second. As you progress, you'll collect just as many random turrets that you can swap out on the fly as you do more waifus to make your tank drive and shoot like a champion. If you truly want to master your shooting skills though, you may want to take a journey into the roguelike shooter Soul Slinger Envoy of Death. As an envoy of death, you work for death heading out into this purgatorial landscape of old western environments that you came dressed just right for. You'll swing your six-shooter and double-barreled shotgun at these various monsters and people monsters that spawn in and walk toward you menacingly until you wipe out the lot and reclaim the souls they vacuumed up. In addition to saving some souls to get swooped into this portal, you'll gain resources for permanent upgrades to your ass-kicking powers as well as unlocking new weapons to choose for each run. Weapons that can be augmented with magical powers to rain holy hell on these unholy hellions. But magic is the foundation of this next first-person adventure that takes you back to the 2DS 3D world of Doom clones with Wizardom. Here you'll start with the simple glory of a big-ass mace that you can use to reshape the skulls of some goblin creatures, but soon you'll unlock some more pyrotechnic powers like fireballs to scorch those pixelated people out of existence. 
While reigning chaos within these miles of stone corridors, you'll discover maps that will almost give you a vague idea of how to navigate this maze and sometimes uncover perhaps 10% of the secrets for more resources to keep you alive and magically empowered. All to help you reach the end and get a score so you can finally quantify your failures precisely. If there's one thing you'll want to quantify though, it's how much gold you can collect in gangs of Sherwood. This game that I'd never heard of puts you in the role of Robin Hood and his manly men in tights as they take on those classic Nottingham villains. Except this time, rather than the dystopian world being purely medieval, you've got all sorts of quasi-magical mechanical bullshit happening. You'll use one of the four main characters to suit your playstyle, like shooting arrows or bashing things with a big-ass hammer like you know I do. You can also take advantage of a fairly robust skill set to smash, crash, and get the cash through levels with a pretty broad moveset and a Devil May Cry score system that rewards you for making murder look sexy. You can even steal from the rich and get slapped by this bitch with a whole squad of people online if any are actually available, which of course means the real fun comes down to how popular this game ultimately is at launch. One title that ensures you don't need popularity to have fun in a game is Forgive Me Father 2. This horror first-person shooter isolates you in a world of a bunch of mutated monster zombie people that want nothing more than to kill and or eat you. Luckily, you're armed with a shiv fresh out of jail and can stab your way to pistols and shotguns with as much ammo as you can carry in one hand. Once you've pull started a flashlight like a chainsaw, you can find your way through twisting levels filled with eldritch shenanigans and make your way through doors with color-coded keys and crack open some weird floor blobs for extra ammo all to get to a door at the end of the level and once again fail to find those goddamn secrets. There is one secret, though, that has been kept from far too many people, and that's the open-world survival RPG in Shrouded. I haven't willingly played a survival game since Minecraft release because I refuse to ever again punch a tree, but I made an exception for this game because not only do you not have to punch a tree, but you can actually fight creatures with tactics and finesse. But it also features a voxel world that lets you dig anywhere and change the terrain so you can carve out your own little hermit cave. But you can also build houses that look like actual houses and collect NPC companions from giant egg containers to come stay at their own houses by your house to make you more house shit. This place is cozy as hell, and the coziness factor is actually a buff to aid you in your ability to do more RPG things. So when you go on a multi-day adventure into the fungus-based shroud and day instantaneously turns into night, you'll be ready to fight off some monsters and grapple hook your way back to safety. Safety isn't guaranteed in this next shoot 'em up bullet hell breakout experience against great darkness. If you like that classic ball bouncing against a paddle gameplay but felt like there weren't enough bullets and demons flying at you down a narrow corridor, you can finally have the opportunity to experience that with all the triumphs and perils that come with yet another roguelike. Not every game is a roguelike, but some do channel your favorite games of the past that you just keep playing like Quake 2 and Half-Life by giving you guns and letting you shoot at ugly alien bug things like the last exterminator. As an exterminator, you'll brandish your typical pest control tools like an Uzi or Frisbee bombs to clean up this city one giant bipedal cockroach with a gun at a time. You may not be the most recognizable exterminator on the block, but you will be the one that saves the world and never finds those fucking secrets. Now that you've seen the 20 best games I played from the Steam Next Fest, which one do you think was best? Were there any you thought should go on the list but didn't make it? Put that shit in the comments and let everyone know why you think you're better than me. And if you want more demo preview fun, check out these other videos from Steam Next Fest of the past.